Some new features are being unlocked on all Tesla models, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plus, Tesla has stopped taking new orders on one of their hottest cars, and that trend might continue with some more models to come very soon. So if you're gonna order a Tesla, if you're thinking about it, you're gonna wanna order like ASAP. And Tesla is about to make one big change very soon that will change the EV industry and all cars forever. No clickbait, no lies here. When Tesla makes this change, it's gonna be really good for Tesla owners and also really bad. So let me tell you what that change is, all the latest developments in the wild world of Tesla, and basically break down all the Tesla news you need to know about. So sit back and relax, and let me tell you everything you need to know that happened the past few days in the ever-changing, crazy Tesla world. Also, a huge thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. They make some beautiful, high-quality apparel that looks great, feels great. You're going to love it. More on all that in a bit. Now, the past few weeks have been sort of interesting in the Tesla world because there's been a lot going on and also nothing going on at the same time. Sounds kind of crazy to say, but we get like these bursts of Tesla news, like one day we get like multiple stories, then nothing seems to happen. So I do have some interesting things to talk about, but also like in the grand scheme of Tesla news, things have been very quiet. Quiet on the software update front, quiet on the Giga Texas front. For example, we still don't know any new news on the standard range Model Y that made sort of its unofficial debut last month at the launch of Giga Texas. This, again, is the lower range, dual motor, cheaper Model Y that I think is going to be a great option when it actually launches. But as of right now, it's still sort of stuck in limbo of being off menu and available to just Tesla employees only as of right now. We've also been seeing increased activity at Giga Texas. Dozens of cars are being rolled outside and loaded onto carriers, but we don't know specifically what the spec of cars are, we don't know where they're going, and we don't know who they're going for. We've seen a number of sort of these spy shots lately of people sort of seeing these cars around Texas, but it seems like at this point, production sort of is still in the ramping up stage, and it seems like these cars might just be going to employees as of right now. Maybe it's a mix of standard range model-wise and performance model-wise, but it's really unclear right now what uh, Giga Texas is doing and when these cars are going to go out to the general public. So if you order a Model Y right now, depending, of course, on your delivery date, there's a good chance it's going to be a Fremont-made Model Y and not a Giga Texas-made Model Y. Of course, everyone wants the Giga Texas Model Y because that's going to have the 4680 battery pack. It's going to have the AMD Ryzen processor, all the sort of latest and greatest accoutrements for the Model Y. So, of course, depending on your delivery date, if it's sooner than later, probably going to be a Fremont-made car, but maybe if it's toward the end of the year into 2023, then we probably will see more cars being out of Giga Texas, and maybe you'll have your chance of getting a Texas-made Model Y. And speaking, of course, of delivery dates, I've got some bad news for anyone who's looking to put an order in for an all-new Tesla. And I guess my little piece of advice here is do it soon, like do it right now, because you might not be able to do it today, tomorrow, or even in the next hour or so, because uh, things are about to change. Before we continue with more Tesla news, I wanted to quick break and talk about this awesome shirt. You guys have seen some really cool shirts on me lately with some cool designs. Let me tell you, they are as comfortable as they look. I love uh, my apparel here. And of course, if you see me wearing a shirt, there's a really good chance, 99%, that it is made by this video's sponsor, into the AM. And I love Into the AM for many good reasons, including the fact that they've been making ultra comfortable and premium clothing since 2012, and they're on a mission to help you express your energy, your creativity, your style, your passion with some high quality apparel that just looks and feels incredible. And Into the AM has got you covered with a wide variety of really high quality apparel, including their collection of graphic tees that look great, have super comfortable materials, and also have some really vibrant, colorful designs on them. And they also just launched some new designs that you're definitely going to want to check out, like the Cosmic Collision tee here, the Base Face, Galactic Control, and the Overflow Tees. All of these have really vibrant ink, some really cool designs, really comfortable shirts as well that I know you guys are just gonna love. And not only do I love Into the M for always making great stuff that looks great, feels great, is super comfortable, but also they've got some great deals going on right now as well. You can pick up three graphic tees for just 60 bucks and three basic tees, my personal favorite here, for just $49.95. So now is the time, guys. Upgrade your apparel today by checking out the awesome stuff that Into the M has to offer. You can hit the link down below to learn more or head to IntoTheM.com slash Robert10 and use my coupon code Robert10 at checkout to get 10% off your order work site-wide. It's an awesome code to take advantage of those deals and savings today. Again, the link is right down below. Head to intothem.com slash Robert10 and use my special code Robert10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. 
Elon Musk himself said in a recent interview that Tesla may limit or suspend new orders altogether of cars with long lead times. In addition to everything we've seen this year with the Model 3 and Y, including price increases and delivery dates that just continue to slip, Tesla demand is seemingly stronger than ever. And Elon himself said it's a supply problem, not a demand problem. There is so much demand for these cars that Tesla just cannot make them fast enough. And Tesla has already sort of started to do this after Musk said it was going to happen as they have stopped taking reservations for the Cybertruck in some countries. I know it's not the same as the current cars right now, the Model Y or the Model 3, but that could be happening very very soon. So what does this all mean? Taking a look at Tesla.com shows a few models with significant wait times. Most notable, of course, probably the most popular model right now is the base sort of long range Model Y. If you order one right now, at the time of filming this video, the delivery window is November through February of 2023. That is well over six months out at the earliest, and that's with Tesla sort of being optimistic. If we're sort of uh, taking more realistic things into approach, you're probably not going to get this car until sometime next year, which is just crazy to think about. And on one hand, this makes sense because this is probably one of Tesla's top sellers right now. I even bought one and I love my long range Model Y and there is an incredible demand for the long range Model Y, which is probably also why they're making the standard range Model Y. But for now, let's just sort of uh, put that to the side for a moment and focus on the models that are currently available right now to order. And on one hand, stopping orders does make sense because they just can't make these cars fast enough. But I also don't know what the difference is than just letting people put their order in and seeing when that delivery date is. Because when you order your Tesla now, um, you know, you're putting that $250 deposit down and you know you're probably not going to get your car for quite some time. It says, you know, plainly on the website, it doesn't say you're going to get it in two weeks or four weeks. It says, hey, it's probably not November through, uh, you know, February of 2023. So people know that. And as long as Tesla is clear about that and they sort of know that going in, I don't see why you would sort of stop taking orders and letting people sort of get their sort of spot in the queue and then open it up later, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And if you do place your order right now, you've sort of got two scenarios. Best case scenario is that you get your car way sooner. Tesla is uh, under promising and over delivering, which would be great. Or the worst possible scenario is you have to wait for your time um, when it comes and you're waiting quite some time. And if you're sort of on the fence about it, I would probably do it because uh, best case scenario, you get your car. Worst case scenario, you cancel and you're out $250. So there is sort of $250 on the line here for your order, uh, but the advantage obviously is that if you put your order in now, you're locking in your price, you're locking in your delivery date, which of course is always fluctuating and always subject to change. So if you are on the fence, put that order in now so you sort of lock in your place because there is a chance that sometime in the not so distant future, Tesla just sort of stops taking orders for the Model Y long range altogether. This could of course also come to other Tesla models. Uh, the rear wheel Model 3 is also a candidate for this, the standard range model at all also has a delivery window that is quite a few months back. There's also the long range Model X and I think the Model S too that are also sort of the more popular models that have longer lead times. So just sort of keep in mind that if you are looking to get probably a non-performance model, especially when it comes um, to the Model Y and the Model 3, probably place your order now because there's a chance, a chance that Tesla stops taking orders sometime soon. Now, in case you haven't seen the video yet, yes, CarPlay and Android Auto have officially come to all Tesla vehicles, not by Tesla themselves, obviously, because they're never going to do it. But thanks to a developer who made the impossible possible, there is now a way to get Android Auto or CarPlay installed on your Tesla wirelessly. Now, I published a nearly 30 minute video on this project. I walk you through step by step exactly how to do this. If you're interested, check the video out uh, up here or down below. Look, if you're expecting Tesla themselves to add CarPlay or Android Auto, you're going to be waiting forever because it's not going to happen. Rumor has it right now that Tesla is just going to bypass Apple and Google and make their own app store, which is more lucrative and beneficial for them. So that's probably going to happen sometime this year, hopefully. So CarPlay and Android Auto aren't going to come. So if you do want it on your car, you're going to have to look for a workaround. And this is one of the best, most affordable ways to do it as of right now. There's also people who say that, look, I don't want CarPlay, I don't want Android Auto. And I get that. If you are happy with the basic Tesla interface, then by all means, enjoy it, go for it you're going to be happy. But if you do want access to more third-party apps, if you want to use Waze and you want to use Apple Music or YouTube Music or Amazon Music or you want to use the Audible app or whatever you know third-party app you want to use that's supported by CarPlay, this is a great way to do it. Uh, there are caveats to it. It's obviously not an, a plug-and-play solution, but I promise you it's not very complicated. I'm not the most tech-savvy person in the world when it comes to this stuff, and I could do it. It's very simple. So if you do want to check out the video, again, I'll leave a link down below. You sort of are walk through the entire process step-by-step, step, and it does work really well. 
well. I've been using it in my car for the last several days and it's worked really well. It's very um, reliable. Uh, I get, you know, the full CarPlay experience and it's not too laggy. Audio works and all that's well and good. So if you do want to check it out, it is really cool that it has come. Uh, check it out down below. But uh, for those of you angry and upset that I made that video, sorry, I guess. I kind of want to show off cool hacks and things that I would want to see as a Tesla owner. And I know many Tesla owners would love to see it as well. So if you don't want to have CarPlay Android Auto, great. You don't have to do it. But for those of you who are interested, there is now a way to do it that is way better than any other way that I've tested. So check that video out down below. Check out the parts. Works really well. So just thought I'd share it because thought it was interesting to me. So sorry if you were offended by that, but um, you know, what am I supposed to do? Now, one huge change that Tesla is making very soon that is really going to change everything as far as electric vehicles go uh, is opening up superchargers to all other EVs. This is an unprecedented move that has the ability to change the electric vehicle industry forever. In the same interview, we got that quip about Tesla ordering. Elon Musk also himself mentioned that they had begun opening superchargers to third-party EVs in Europe, and they were looking to make that change worldwide, which would allow essentially any EV here in North America to plug in and charge off the Tesla supercharger system, which is really, really cool. That is one of the greatest assets to Tesla owners and sort of the Tesla ecosystem is these reliable, expansive superchargers that are everywhere, and you can plug in and charge really fast and then go on your way. And uh, opening this up to third-party EVs would would be really, really cool. It would really allow anybody to harness the power of this EV infrastructure and supercharge their cars without having to own a Tesla because Tesla is going to implement this. And the specifics on how they would implement this aren't very clear. The thought is either Tesla is going to change the actual connector to something more universal, so maybe it's CCS, for example, or maybe Tesla does a two-cable solution at the end, so you either have the Tesla plug or you have the CCS adapter, or maybe Tesla includes sort of a CCS adapter sort of as a dongle on there on the cable, so like it's sort of tied on there so you can plug it in if you need to go to a non-Tesla EV, and if you have a regular Tesla, you just plug it in. Not exactly sure how Tesla is going to implement this or what the timetable is going to be, but we've already seen them do it overseas in Europe. And um, Elon has said him he's going to you know make the change. Tesla's going to make the change here in the US, which probably means in the next few months, we will somehow see this implemented across superchargers worldwide eventually. And obviously, this would be a big deal for a few reasons. The first one, the biggest one being that any EV owner could get reliable, affordable, fast charging basically anywhere in the world. Now, I know that the supercharger network is more expensive, expensive. Well, it is more expensive some places than others, also more extensive some places than others. Uh, but it would really remove the barrier a lot of people have because the Electrify America and the charge points and other systems aren't as reliable and stable as superchargers are right now. So being able to take advantage of that would be great and would really sort of open this up for for everybody. And Tesla has been very vocal about accelerating the move uh, of electrification in vehicles to everybody, not just sort of keeping this proprietary for themselves. On the other hand, though, this is not so good for Tesla owners because it would inherently make superchargers even more crowded. And I'll tell you right now, as a supercharger user occasionally, but someone who lives in Southern California, superchargers are more packed now than they ever have been before. And I was sort of an early-ish Model 3 owner, and I'm sure that when the S and the X were uh, around and those were the only cars, it was even better. But now, as more people get the Model Y and the Model 3, superchargers are almost always full all the time, especially on weekends people are always there just plugging in to charge their cars up. So uh, opening these up to more EVs as people get more and more EVs is going to be uh, a little bit cumbersome because it's going to make superchargers even more sort of um, crowded, so to speak. Uh, so it's not going to be great for Tesla owners in that regard. There's also the issue that many people buy Teslas just for that supercharger network because it is an asset as a Tesla owner that I have access to this supercharger network that is reliable, it's pretty affordable, I can charge my car fast, and it's only for me. Taking that away is going to make it a little bit more difficult. Again, it's going to make it less of an asset as a Tesla owner. It's going to make it, you know, a little bit more crowded. So maybe there's one less reason to buy a Tesla if the supercharger network is open to everyone. And again, this is going to take some time. We're not sure how Tesla is going to implement this. So sort of keep that in mind. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this as a Tesla owner or a potential owner? Does opening up the supercharger network um, make it a good thing or a bad thing for Tesla owners? Does it make you less likely to buy a Tesla if you can use a non-Tesla on the supercharger network? Let me know your thoughts on this down below. It's a little bit complicated, a little bit controversial, uh, but it looks like that move is going to happen sooner than later and uh, would really change the EV industry in all cars forever thanks to Tesla. 
And then two last tidbits of news I want to mention before I wrap things up is that one, the mobile connector is now back in stock, at least at the time of filming this video, the mobile connector is in stock. So if you do want to buy it, go ahead and buy it now for 200 bucks, which is, uh, I've talked about it before, a very controversial move by Tesla. But if you are looking to get a Tesla and you're placing a new order, make sure you buy that. And also it looks like Hertz is now receiving their Model Ys that they ordered uh, in that big purchase of Model 3s and Model Ys. Not exactly sure where they're going to go or when they're going to be available, but some spy shots have confirmed that uh, Hertz has ordered a number of Model Ys that are being delivered. Looks like they've got the induction wheels on them and look really good. So if you're looking to rent a Tesla and maybe uh, try it out for the first time or rent one when you're on a trip, it looks like you'll soon be able to get to Model Ys very soon. I've been looking on Hertz's website for Model 3s and it looks like they're sort of all over the place. I think they're very prevalent in SFO, so that's a great way to get them. Uh, but it looks like their sort of inventory is always moving. But uh, if you're looking to rent a Tesla for more affordable uh, than sort of buying one or doing a rental on Tura or something, I don't know if it's cheaper than Tura, but I definitely check out Hertz because now they will have Model 3s and Model Ys available for rent. All right, guys, and that's going to do it for me. That is the Tesla news of the week that you need to know about. As always, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on CarPlay and Android Auto on Teslas? What are your thoughts on Tesla uh, suspending new orders? Do you think it's the right thing or the wrong thing? Your thoughts on op opening the supercharger network? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And uh, software updates. What do you want to see? When's the next one coming? What would you love to see as a, a new Easter egg in your Tesla? Let me know your thoughts on all this stuff down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.